This is Bobby C. out at MetLife Stadium where we begin our look at sports this week with the New York football giants. Unfortunately, their offensive struggles continued on Monday Night Football. The evening wasn't all bad for the New York Giants. It was also a night when the team honored the 10 year anniversary of that 2007 football championship season. We didn't just win a game. We just get, get it done. Fellas, I need a little help. What did we do? That 2007 team started the season 0-2, and this year's team starts the season 0-2 as well. The final score tonight, 24-10. The New York Giants out of answers. We have to analyze everything we're doing. I mean, we can't pull points out of a hat. We have, to, we have to get to work. We have to block better. We have to handle the ball better. We can't turn the ball over. We have to play, play complete complementary football, and we're not doing it. You know, there were some good things. We moved the ball um, you know, better. Uh, I thought we played better than we did last week. Just obviously the, the, the turnover hurt us. Uh, and then, um, you know, just not, not convert on third downs enough. Odell Beckham Jr. did play coming off the injury, but the big story still, the struggles of the offensive line and the running game. Whenever you lose, it's, it's, it's frustrating. Um, we're just, I think, we're more so frustrated that we're not clicking as a unit, as an offensive unit. Uh, the defense is playing very well, so we just need to compliment them. We're not running the ball well. We're not protecting the quarterback very well. Um, Coach probably touched on it. We're not playing complimentary football. Um, so, not good overall. The 0-2 Giants are far from throwing in the towel, but they know Sunday's game in Philadelphia is pivotal for their season. And for that matter, it starts a tough stretch for Big Blue. After Philly, they have Tampa Bay, San Diego, Denver, and Seattle. We will know more for the Giants by their Week 8 bye. The Giants have Odell Beckham Jr. back, but were without several key defensive players. At practice on Wednesday, top flight defenders Janoris Jenkins and B.J. Goodson are still sidelined. I've picked them the last two weeks. The Eagles have always been historically tough on them, but with OBJ, Hopefully a little fresher in week three off the ankle injury. I'll take the G-men again in the rivalry game, or at least I think so. Don't listen to me anymore. The Jets are entering in the softest part of their schedule. Hope, hopefully they handle that stretch, and that will tell us how historically bad a year this could be for the Jets. Gang Green is 0-2, coming off their 45-20 drumming against the now 2-0 Oakland Raiders. The Jets will have their home opener Sunday against Miami. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. The Dolphins are 1-0. Let's take the Jets, too. I had Kool-Aid for breakfast this morning. From the gridiron to the racetrack, Martin Truex Jr. still atop the NASCAR standings. The chase is on. NASCAR swings into New Hampshire Sunday for a 2 p.m. start. Dover follows next weekend. In F1, Lewis Hamilton is back on top in the driver standings. He is starting to separate himself from Sebastian Vettel. F1 will be in Malaysia next weekend. In IndyCar, the Racing League has a new American champion in the 26-year-old Joseph Newgarden. He was flawless and has run at the title holding off four-time champion Scott Dixon and it comes in his first year with Penske. Newgarden's first Penske victory in race three at Barber and by the time it was all over, he had won four races, podium nine times and became the first American to win an IndyCar championship since Ryan Hunter Ray in 2000. 2012 and the first driver younger than 30 years old to win a title since Dixon won his second in 2008. Newgarden called Team Penske the Yankees of the sport. They are one of the best motorsports teams in the world, not just North America, but the world. Newgarden said at a lunch on Pier 39 on Monday, the day after winning the championship, the way they operate, they are world, world class. It's like playing baseball for the New York Yankees. If you play baseball, you want to play for the Yankees because of the prestige, the culture, the longevity, and the tradition and history and success is unbelievable. That's how Team Penske is in motorsports. They are the creme de la creme. They are the standard. They are a great group. And speaking of the Bronx Bombers, the Yankees completed a three game sweep of the Twins with an 11 3 victory on Wednesday, bringing their record to 78 31 versus Minnesota since the start of the 2002 season. After homering in Wednesday's win over the Twins, Aaron Judge is now four home runs shy of tying Mark McGuire's all time rookie record for a season with 10 games left to play. He has 45 dingers this season. When you've won four rings in the Bronx, you know all about baseball's biggest stage. And former Yankee skipper Joe Torre 
Missouri believes in the baby bombers and especially in Judge. He told ESPN this week that he sees big things from Judge come playoff time. Judge hit his AL leading 45th home run and topped 100 RBIs. Not to be outdone, D.D. Gregorius surpassed Derek Jeter for the most home runs by a Yankee shortstop and New York beat the Twins 11-3 on Wednesday for a three-game sweep. Earlier this month on September 14th, Gary Sanchez hit his 31st home run of the season, breaking the record for most homers in a single season by a Yankee catcher, previously held by Yogi Berra in 1952-1956 and Jorge Posada in 2003. Many milestones this season. We'll see if world champions could be added to the ledger for the, for the Bronx Bombers. The Yankees have other good news, too. Their hard-throwing closer has rediscovered his dominant form, shutting down the Twins in a possible postseason preview this week. Araldis Chapman is back as the closer. The Yanks are fully embracing the thumbs down sign. The internet meme was born after Yankees third baseman Todd Frazier hit a home run against the Tampa Rays at Citi Field, leading an unhappy fan to stoically show his displeasure as Frazier rounded the bases. The Yankees have playfully made the sign in the dugout. After home runs this week, the pinstripers showed off T-shirts with the thumbs down sign. Hopefully, thumbs up for one little Yankee fan this week in the Bronx. The frightful Yankee Stadium episode Wednesday in which a little girl was injured by a foul ball calls to mind the ongoing concerns of Manny Coolbow, whose husband Mike, a minor league first base coach, was killed during July 2007 on a liner that struck him in the neck. She says when she and their two toddler sons attended Mike's games, he insisted that they stay in an area with a protective netting and that she advocates extending netting at ballparks. This should happen in the Bronx too. Mets GM Sandy Alderson says it's highly unlikely the Mets won't bring back struggling right-hander Matt Harvey. With another homer on Wednesday, Giancarlo Stanton came away with two long balls in the three-game series with the Mets, bringing his career tally against them to 35. He has an impressive 56 homers this year. He's got a serious shot at 60. In the world of professional basketball, Goran Dragic, fresh off an MVP performance in the European Basketball Championships, teared up after being presented with a jersey of the late Drajan Petrovic. Touching moment for the Slovenian. Knicks fans may not need the Carmelo Anthony drama any longer. We have Be Easy Mike Beasley on the roster. The Knicks' newest free agent acquisition thinks New York can make the playoffs. He said this week that he thinks the team has four guys that can average 25 a game, including himself. The only one of those four that averaged 25 a game is Melo, and that hasn't happened in quite a long time. Beasley also added, I'm going to be your favorite player's favorite player. The wit and wisdom of Michael Beasley. Triple G retained his middleweight titles on Saturday night, fighting to a controversial draw with Canelo Alvarez in a brutal battle. A weird, skewed set of judges' scores will overshadow the aftermath of the brilliance displayed in the middleweight showdown. I would expect a rematch here. Boxing took another hit Thursday. Undefeated light heavyweight champion Andre Ward announced his retirement from boxing at the age of 33. Shocking news. And here in the Bronx, we said goodbye to our Bronx Bull, Jake LaMotta. Here's more in the C-List. champion and subject of the 1980 movie Raging Bull has died at the age of 95. He passed away Tuesday. LaMotta died because of complications from pneumonia and was in a nursing home in Miami. His wife Denise Baker told ABC News. LaMotta's wife said the family is in the planning stages of his memorial and funeral. Known for his battles with Sugar Ray Robinson and his portrayal by Robert De Niro on Raging Bull, LaMotta held the middleweight title from 1949 to 1951 and was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990. LaMotta went 83-90 19 and 4 with 30 knockouts in a career that lasted from 1941 to 1954. He fought multiple times in a month, several times, earning a reputation as a brawler and the nickname the Bronx Bull. Jake epitomized the grit that comes with being a Bronxite. I had the pleasure of meeting him and he was a friend to my family in his youth. He was always nice to my mom when she was a kid and he and my grandfather had a nice friendship that dated back to the glory days of Gleason's. Rest in peace. Bronx Bull, that's your sports. I'm Bobby C.